I am so excited to introduce our speaker for today. First Lady Deborah Denise, Denise Glenn, worshiper, mentor, virtuous servant, and vessel of grace are the characteristics of this dynamic woman of God. Deborah Glenn is the First Lady of the Macedonia Baptist Church right here in Akron, Ohio. She has served faithfully providing love and loyal support to her husband in the ministry. First Lady Deborah has traveled from city to city sharing the good news of our Lord and Jesus Savior as the keynote speaker, empowering women to live, to live their fullest God-given potential. She genuinely loves God, her family, and the work ministry. She loves serving the Lord, which she plans to do all the days of her life. She has been married to the love of her life, Pastor Lorenzo Glenn, for 46 years. <laughs> Through this union, she has two beautiful girls, Candace Green Wade and Diamond, who's married to Lavelle Sharp. She has had the pleasure of being a honey, I believe that's a grandmother, to her three favorite people, La Lavelle Lorenzo, Navy Lauren, and Douglas Mitchell. Lady Deborah's passion is to spread the love of her Lord and Savior. She wants to ensure that everyone knows that he is the greatest love of all. Her go-to scripture is the one that we heard earlier, Psalm 27, 1 through 6. So after the choir sings, the first voice you'll hear is that of Jerry's sister and my cousin, First Lady Deborah Glenn. Amen. Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. I said good morning. good morning. Wow. This is an awesome thing for me today. I first would like to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is truly the head of my life. And to the great pastor and first lady here of the United Baptist Church. That's all right, give them some praise. And to my cousin, Dee Dee, who extended this invitation. It's all right, go ahead, give your pastor and your first lady some praise. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for your gracious invitation to speak on this woman's day. And may I say, I have to say to myself, ladies, you look absolutely beautiful. All right. This is such a heartfelt moment for me. Why? Because never in a thousand years would I have ever thought I would be standing here behind this podium speaking about my God. I mean, I stood up here before, but it was in the choir or as an usher bringing something to a preacher. United started in my life as an infant, way back at 918 Bellow Street, under the leadership of Pastor Hall. But this right here is amazing. This right here is amazing. Slow it down. Well, some of you are not familiar with my family. I know that my cousin Dee Dee introduced them, but I'm gonna do it just one more time. I need to shake them shackles and them butterflies away from me. I have two daughters that are here by the name of Candace Renee and Diamond Lene. Would you please stand? These are my babies. This is where they started and got their root. Thank you, baby. Now, I have three grandchildren that call me honey. Everybody can't be called a honey without being coaxed into calling you honey. I have my oldest grandson by the name of Lavelle Lorenz, Glenn Sharp, please stand. That's my boy. I have a granddaughter, my only girl. That's my only girl. That's my girlfriend. We have a song we sing, She's My Girlfriend. She's my girlfriend. Her name is Navy Loren. Now, you know, it's something funny about those middle names because somehow they seem fit not to put my name in it. They got their grandpa's name, Lavelle Lorenz and Lorenzo. Navy Loren, like Lorenzo. But praise be to God, I have a Mike, a Douglas Michael. He's not here, he's in New York. He got D. His name is Douglas. They gave me something. And I praise God for him. But you know, not only did she give me a D, but for those of you that don't know, he looked just like my daddy. And he act just like my daddy. And I praise God for that. But in the absence of my husband, he had to preach the pastor Lorenzo Glenn, the love of my life. He is at Macedonia and he is not happy he's not here. I'm not happy he's not here. I've, I've only done this a couple of times out of his presence, but that's when I wasn't here in the city of, of Akron. D don't get it twisted. I don't do no, I ain't, I ain't all that. I, I just, I go when they ask. But I also have my family here. Most of you know my sister, Jerry. I call her Jural. My big sister, Mary. I don't know where she went, there she is. I have my, my nephew and his wife right here, Garnett and Nikki. I also have my cousins here. I have John, Stacy, and, and Elaine, Danny, Nay, 
I know them faces right there. Those are your friends. I've been knowing them for a long time, way back when y'all got married. Praise God. And I have some extended family here. It's hard to keep naming folks because you're going to miss somebody. So if I miss you, don't take it for granted. I have my brother-in-law in the back, Calvin. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Ha. He came to see me. And I have some extended love. I have Connie Mitchell and Diane and Sandra Sykes. There she go. When she started singing, I, all I could think about was the old United Baptist Church. And to anyone that I missed, don't take it to, don't take it to heart. Because I love each and every one of you. And I thank you for coming on this day. Now, usually when I come, I have something that belongs to my, to my parents. I have on my mom's brooch. And I usually carry my dad's handkerchief. But something about that handkerchief mysteriously disappeared. But I have two things anyway. I have his memory of sitting over here. And so if you see me looking over there, I'm looking at my daddy. But I also have another look-alike. He may not look just like him, but he act like him. And that's my cousin, Steve. And I'm so grateful for you being here, love. I, I love you with all my heart. So, with any further ado, let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Just thanking you for this day, a glorious day, an amazing day in your name, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you would allow your word to go out strong and that it will be received in the way that it is given. Lord, I ask that you would allow Deborah to step to the side and you stand here behind this podium and lift your word up, Father. For truly, your word is worthy to be lifted up. And I love you every single moment, Father. So, Lord, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise and glory. And I won't be so careful. I will be careful to give you all the love of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And don't let me forget my armor bearer, Renee Thomas. She is with me all the time even when i'm not out she with, she's with me and i'm i'm grateful for that all right the theme for this woman's day is peace in the midst of tribulation amen peace in the midst of tribulation it was received from the text of john 16:33 if you would be so kind, would you turn to John 16, and stand and let us read the word together? All right. Amen. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You may be seated. What I would like for you to do is turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. somebody needs to cheer up. All right, now, now stretch around or wrench around or whatever you want to say and say it again. Say, neighbor. Somebody need to cheer up. Amen, amen. I, I, I know my, my title for this text, Didi, may seem somewhat unclear. When we witness the escalating crime, the violence, the corruption, the shootings, homicides, vandalism, and carjacking human trafficking and opioid crisis, fentanyl and overdoses, just to name a few. Well, First Lady Deborah, if we may ask the question, what is there to cheer up about? Well, 
I'm so glad you asked. Just give me just a few minutes and I can validate my position, which brings me to my first point. There is peace in Jesus. Huh? There is peace in Jesus. We are accustomed to hearing, hearing when, we face, when we're faced with social injustice and systemic racism, the shout is, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. The problem with the chant is we might have to wait in line a long time for justice to bring in peace. Once again, we might have to wait in line a long time for justice to bring us peace. Amen? Amen. However, this morning, Jesus demands a point of order, declaring he is the giver of peace. I know that I'm right about it because Isaiah 9, 6 says, His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, uh, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Huh? Cheer up. Peace is not found in protest. Uh, There's nothing wrong with protesting. You just won't find peace in it. Peace is found in prosperity. I'm not found in prosperity. Peace is not found in popularity. Most of you may remember the late Don Cornelius. Come on, work with me. Most of you may remember the late Don Cornelius. He was the creator and the host of Soul Train. Yeah, Soul Train. He was the, he was the host, guys, for like 37 years all suited up, perfect afro, and every week we heard him close with peace, love, and soul. But he took his own life, being completely overwhelmed with everyday life. But because prosperity and popularity won't bring you peace. Did he have prosperity? And he had popularity. But by the complexity of this world, it didn't help. Sad but true, peace is not found necessarily in the church. I know some of y'all looking at me a little crazy, like I'm a little special, and I might be. But the worst fight in a church is the worst hurt in the church. I one goes, you know how that saying says, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party? I was going to say, ain't no fight like a church fight, but I better not say that. (laughs) But the worst hurts are hurts of the heart in the church. You know, it's all bad when, when praise and worship is interrupted by pride and division, devotion. And by the way, ladies, you did an awesome job. Devotion turns into disturbance. Uh, Fellowship turns into a free-for-all. No justice, no peace. Now, I went a little further, and and with, with, with with the grace of, of my, of my, there go my husband. With the grace of my, my cousin, <laughs> hallelujah, she gave me so much time. I had opportunity to look up a whole bunch of stuff, but I didn't. <laughs> now, Romans 5, 1 declares, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then I went on a little further, then it says, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto who? Unto who? Unto God. 
and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. A songwriter penned, Oh, what peace we often forfeit, and oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. No justice, but no Jesus, no peace. Uh Uh-huh, I tricked you. I tricked you. Because we get a little familiar with that, but let's just say it one more time. No Jesus. No peace. Cheer up. I remember reading about the storm on the Sea of Galilee when Jesus was asleep in the bow of the ship and the crew was convinced that they would die. Declared, Master, Claire is not, we perish. Then Jesus said, he, you know, like, he probably said, oh my goodness. But Jesus said, oh ye of little faith, Then he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace, be still. No Jesus, no peace. Cheer up. Which brings me to my second point. There is tribulation in the world. I say there is tribulation in the world. Jesus is telling us that in this world, we will have tribulation. So how can peace and tribulation live under the, together under the same roof? Now, 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 you would think tribulation would derail peace. You would think tribulation would unravel peace. You would think that tribulation would frustrate peace, huh? A little frustration. You would think that tribulation would um, interrupt peace. Now, at our house, and and when I say that, I I say that's Macedonia. That pastor right there teaches us a lot of Greek stuff. So if I throw some Greek, it ain't because of me. It's because he has pounded it in us. (laughs) Now, the Greek word for tribulation is the the lipsis. It is used to convey the idea of great emotional and spiritual stress that can be caused by external and internal pressures. Tribulation can come in forms of trouble, trials, distress, persecution, worry, huh? Now worry in the Greek means to strangle, to choke. It is the helpless, inescapable feeling of not being able to breathe. And worry can result in the same suffering. Now, tribulation can also come in the form of sickness, bereavement, and disease. Just to name a few. Now, now if I go back into sickness, bereavement, and disease, that has sat at my table. And all I could do was give it to God. Because there was many days when my baby was in the hospital. I could tell you from here to there how many squares it was. I could tell you how many lights was there. I could tell you all the little, the way they had the ceilings. But I praise God because she's sitting right there right now. I don't take God for granted. Mm -mm. That was just to name a few. But Jesus came, comes to the rescue. He tells us, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, I'm the world. We will, in in this world, I'm sorry, we will have tribulation. Let 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 me say it again. In this world, we will have tribulation. The last thing I would like to share is Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Overcome in the text means to have victory over or to be victorious. Now the world challenged Jesus and he, Jesus, 
got the victory. Now, Jesus encourages us that when we go through whatever we go through, no matter what it is, no matter what the suffering, huh? He said, be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Another, maybe one more Greek for you. The Greek word for victory is Nike. It's where we get our English word, Nike. Some of you probably didn't know you were wearing victory. Huh? I said some of you probably didn't even know you was wearing victory. You've had victory on your head with a Nike hat, amen? You have victory on your shirt or your hoodie. You have victory on your feet with Nike sneakers. Now, now, you didn't even know you was wearing victory. Now, now, I'm, pro I'm not promoting Nike nor during, doing a commercial, but if they'd like to give my grandson something, I'd be more than happy. I'm promoting victory in Jesus. Oh, y'all forgot what I said. Cheer up. Now, in Ephesians 6.14 says, it wraps up, wraps us up in victory as well, victory gear. Having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith. Now, now the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, we thank you, Lord, for just equipping us with everything we need outside of our Nikki gear to win the battle this day. Now, now, we praise him for we are equipped with the armor of God. Because you know when you put on your Nike gear, you are equipped with how you look. Now, Jesus said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Cheer up. Well, church, when did he overcome it? Hmm. I said, when did he get the victory? Well, church, it started at Calvary. Huh? Where they hung him high and they stretched him wide. I said, it started at Calvary. Where they mocked him and called him everything but the son of God. It started at Calvary. When they said, uh, when they said, you saved yourself, others, but yourself, you cannot save. I, it, it started at Calvary when he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I said, it started at Calvary when he told the thief on the cross, thou shalt be with me in paradise. It started at Calvary. When he declared, Tetelestai, it is finished, it started at Calvary, where he hung his head, and, and he died, and, and, but that's not where he got his victory. It started at Calvary. They put him in a borrowed tomb, but that's not where he got the victory. But early, I say early, one Sunday morning, when death couldn't keep him in the grave, I said he got up. I said he got up. Uh, cheer up, I say. That's where he got the victory. So now, so now, cheer up, my sister. Cheer up, my brother. Cheer up because in spite of it all, we have the victory. Cheer up. Uh, somebody needs to cheer up. Uh, despite the storms of life, uh, cheer up. Uh, greater is he in me than is in the world. I say, cheer up. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Cheer up. He's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. I know something about that. Cheer up. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. Cheer up. And when it's all over, I want to hear him say, well done, well done, somebody. Cheer up, uh, praise, and peace in the midst of tribulation. God bless you. I say God bless you. I say cheer up. Uh, 
I said, cheer up. There is peace in God. There is peace in the middle of tribulation. All you got to do is say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I love you, Lord. I'll do what you say do. It's all me, Lord. And I thank you for everything, Lord. Cheer up in the midst of tribulation. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord.